regulating the change that we added based on your feedback, which is also um, increasing opportunities for existing and future frontline staff and these um, agencies to come together across agencies and create standards and share challenges and best practices. So we want to increase the collaboration and communication among all providers in the community. That was a biggie that we heard throughout the process. Um, and expand access to HMIS in order to increase its functionality in the community. We want to increase the data that we're getting in there so that we can research those patterns better or report back to our uh, funders better. Here are some additions based on the feedback we got at last Thursday's presentation. So we want to expand services beyond that 9 to 5, which is when so many of the services are available to start um, being able to re respond to the needs of the communities beyond those business hours. Um, particularly the vulnerable people who may not be able to navigate the traditional system during those hours. And we know how you know, important this meeting is and whatnot. And conduct direct and specific outreach to the business community to um, assist for a plan implementation and systems approach. So we want to tap into their expertise that is very unique as well as possible funding sources. Discharge planning. So a lot of this is uh, remaining the same from our meeting last week. We want to expand those uh, existing protocols for helping folks exiting from jails, prison, and hospitals to receive appropriate access. We want to explore models like critical time intervention, and there's a link in the packet, um, which we can mail electronically so you can click on. So we want to get those right services at the right time for people. Um, and we broke out strengthening programs for youth as even possible in juvenile justice, because we did hear a lot of feedback about that particular population and knowing that homelessness for them is very different. So we want to make sure we identify those unique needs. Increased trauma-informed care for, for staff working with folks that are discharged, especially behind the homeless, because we know those are some unique needs. And ensure adequate funding for recuperative care centers. So we know that sometimes when um, individuals are discharged, they have ongoing medical needs that are shelters and other housing providers can't quite meet. So we want to make sure that we're fully funding and um, assisting that recuperative care center that are placed in the community so they can um, receive those folks as best possible. And then determine how the Hillsborough County Health Plan can um, pay for potentially homeless patients to be housed in a recovery setting with the building discharge. We want to be able to use that plan as a funding source. Increase the awareness of available resources by offering monthly quarterly reports and also having maybe quarterly meetings discharge staff from agencies um, and service providers. So we want to increase that communication and we also know there's turnover. So this would be a consistent meeting for those individuals to get together and discuss what's working, what's not, what's a new resource that's available. Sometimes those discharge institutions just need to know who you call. Third on our list is performance evaluation. So we want to hold all agencies, regardless of their funding, um, to the goal of increasing coordination, outcomes, and systems integration in the community. I think there was a really great quote from someone who attended um, last week saying that we want to hold the community to a standard beyond HUD and beyond the funders, but to something that works for the community and is um, much more effective. Design and implement a performance evaluation tool that measures um, not only required outcomes, but incentivizes best practices to make those outcomes possible. So really researching what is the best practices around the country and how do we implement those here to really, really meet your evaluation goals and streamline outcomes across systems to reduce data collection burdens on providers. We want to provide technical assistance to those providers that are struggling to meet the outcomes. So after we have this performance evaluation in place, so who's not quite making it and how can we help them? How can we peer-to-peer -peer agencies together? How can um, data collectors help people kind of input that information to the system? So there's opportunities for local technical assistance for these agencies. Identify community performance measures and ensure that the performance measures for individual providers are linked to community-wide improvement. So we don't want to set something relevant. We want to make sure that every performance measure is part of a bigger goal to improve the entire system. And create a forum for funders to discuss this um, method. So we heard this a lot last week is um, getting the funders to kind of coordinate on their expectations, on their outcomes, and, and helping them to kind of standardize that process and standardize that reporting um, so that it can be met across, so that agencies with different funders can kind of and across all financials, a little less burdensome. We want to create transparency at all levels to ensure that data is accurate and effectively used. We want it to be able to measure progress, and we also want to use that data to inform some decision making here. So time's being taken to track it and enter it, so we want to use it to kind of inform our local decision making. An addition at the end was to report out on progress on performance and the plan to the larger community on a regular basis. So, so that includes increasing our media outreach and helping the community know the hard work that is going on and increase preparation and successes. This is the health portion. So there was a lot of feedback.
staff and the community are protecting what's in place with the Hillsborough um, County Health Plan, um, not knowing how the Affordable Care Act will eventually roll out in the state, but making sure that we preserve and protect that health plan as a vital resource in the community. We want to improve access to it, however, um, especially for people experiencing homelessness who not, you know, readily have the capacity to apply for those benefits, and that's when those navigators can help come into place. And create additional act teams to support chronic and homeless individuals funded through the health plan. There's an addition there of ensuring that services are tied to housing. And we wanted to add here on several line the addition of an app like team dedicated specifically for working with the homeless youth. In addition, we want to research integrated care models in other communities and determine the best way to provide behavioral and primary health care to um, so homeless individuals and families in the county. We want to make sure that these services are also tied to housing and social services. So we want to increase that collaboration between here. Create care coordinators to help vulnerable individuals navigate the system, um, including adding, considering adding peer mentors and informal homeless people to assist engagement navigation. And explore a frequent user project to determine the highest of volume of users that are um, using your hospitals and using these um, emergency rooms and connect them through medical home. Or I think FQHD. Forget me. FQHD sounds more. Sorry, we'll follow that Create a forum for your FQHCs in Hillsborough County to share practices on providing medical homes. medical assistance in homes for individuals experiencing homelessness. We want to increase that collaboration again. Engaging hospice care. We had some of our representatives from um, Hillsborough County Hospice here with us during the stretch. Um, she wanted to make sure that her services were included in that process. And ensure adequate hygiene and healthy food assistance centers. We know that this is something that is needed, so we want to make sure that we continue to emphasize it. In addition, was to consider alternative care methods such as mediation um, and uh, holistic medicine and homeopathic response. Um, I think that was a, a suggestion from the Salvation Army. It was a um, great addition to the health plan. I think with that, I'm going to over to Heather. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before, just one quick comment before we get started on employment and income. Um, as a result of the feedback session, uh, I, there, the slide said that there were 77 recommendations. Uh, there's actually 83 now, so I just did a quick count. So there's six more that we added as a result of the feedback session. So thank you all for those suggestions. Um, most of these in the beginning are the same as what we um, put out before. And again, I just want to reiterate how uh, I think we have the most recommendations under employment and income, and that's, that's really great. Um, so, um, we wanted to build on the work that NADWAY is doing in terms of increasing communications and understanding between people who are working on employment and those who are um, working on benefits and the relationship between the two and when benefits right now and employment starts and things like that. Um, we uh, heard quite a bit about people losing benefits rather abruptly because of employment or other um, activities related to gaining income. So. Um, this will fall under advocacy as well, but there should we are uh, recommending that you create a plan that helps with transition with those and benefits and services. Um, the transportation plan. Yeah, use existing resources and develop new ones to ensure transportation to job and some work. Okay, um, expand the use of internships and externships, job clubs, job coaches. Um, the model of the Vincent House Clubhouse in Kansas County uh, was listed as a, as a possible model to explore. Um, exploring social entrepreneurship, um, that came out quite a bit. Um, develop a program to help inmates identify income before discharge. Um, that uh, includes benefits as well. Um, and then uh, one of the things that came up pretty strongly in a lot of the recommendations, but particularly in employment, a peer-to-peer -peer support program for people who are looking for work. So those so people can share strategies, ideas, hints, you know, everything that you need to help look for a job. Um, so um, examine and change job search requirements. Um, oh, and then what we added to this one is um, uh, looking at child care opportunities for families with children because it's hard to look for a job when four-year-old, you have to drag your four-year-old along with you. Um, and then looking at non-traditional hours for that as well. 
um, in terms of child care. Okay. Next slide. Um, oh yeah, uh, there was a strong recommendation to collaborate with the Hillsborough County Public Schools Career Centers, and there was also, um, and I think this will come later, uh, uh, there's discussion around partnering with uh, Hillsborough Community College. Um, increase the number of sword training case managers, um, apply to the state to uh, have a part of the tax credit incentives for hiring people who are formerly homeless to be put into a pool that might be like a risk mitigation fund to protect against lawsuits. And then um, the sword to the streets effort, uh, which is um, taking sword and uh, using that model toward people who are even still homeless and not have to wait until people are in some sort of housing situation. Um, Further integrate employment assistance with social services and taking case management, so make it not an afterthought of your service planning, but right in the beginning. Um, engage employers from the business community. There's a lot of uh, additional discussion about the business community in our um, discussion on Thursday. And then we also, um, uh, the, another new recommendation that came out on Thursday was um, looking at nonprofit service providers to develop HR policies that, to share with the private sector in terms of um, ways to um, uh, policy on hiring homeless people and individuals. Housing, um, so as we said on Thursday, um, this was originally called Housing First, but we felt like it was really important to add recommendations around housing that are focused on Housing First, but some of them are, are not just Housing First, um, because there's a variety of responses um, for housing for people experiencing homelessness. So um, we do, uh, recommend that there are supportive housing trainings and trainings on supportive housing and doing services and housing together, and particularly on the model of housing first, so there's a clear understanding of how that works. Um, we're recommending an analysis of your current housing inventory of your shelter, uh, transitional and permanent supportive housing, and in, in that analysis, it's not just counting the slots, it's figuring out do you have enough of the right intervention for the right populations. Um, and in addition to that, this, and this will also fall, it's, it's partly um, motivated by the new performance measures uh, from HUD, but um, it's also a good thing to do, to analyze your current links to stay in shelter, transition housing, and other programs, because if people are sort of festering in one part of the system as opposed to being able to move on, then um, it's not good for them and it's not good for the system. Um, uh, we, yeah, we know you're getting ready to uh, do the 100,000 Homes campaign this winter, and so we're highly supportive of that, and I think that's going to be a really great shot in the arm for housing a lot of homeless people. Um, so uh, we heard a lot about host families program, particularly for homeless youth, and so we thought that sounded like a good program, and we thought that that should be expanded on. Um, so we thought, it, uh, this is something that we wanted to establish, we want, we're recommending the establishment for the role of a housing locator task force, or it, it's, a, it's a group of housing locators whose job is just to do housing location and secure units and find um, units in the community. Because what we, what we find is that the skill set of those who are doing housing locator is just kind of like a salesperson who can go out and sell and, and, and engage landlords. Um, and it frees up the time that case managers have to spend with individuals that can actually work on other things related to that person's self-sufficiency. Um, we think it'd be a good idea to uh, consolidate a landlord list and share it with the system as a whole to find out so there's, um, there's a systemic approach to approaching landlords and that everybody's going to the same landlord 20 times over. Um, and, oh uh, yeah, uh, there's an opportunity, I think, to partner with the private sector to increase prevention resources. Um, and uh, also, it would be really good to, for landlords, not just service providers or homeless providers and um, homeless individuals or, or those who are about to be homeless, but um, landlords should um, have access to prevention resources so they maybe will help one of their tenants um, before they have to evict. Um, we think it's important to establish a flexible short term rental assistance fund modeled after HBRP. Um, but um, maybe just a little bit more flexible to do prevention around the rehousing. And real quick, um, it's not in this packet, but there is an additional set of appendices. We just didn't want to print them today because it'd be another 30 pages. And part of the appendices includes that glossary of terms that we talked about last Thursday. So that is available in the full packet. Uh, 
Yeah, so I mean, just to determine how many units of permanent support housing you need, and it may seem astronomical at first, but the thing is, is that you have to have goals to start working towards. Um, the system wide commitment of faith based communities to um, work with business partners to look at oh, yeah, housing related donations. Um, you can see if there's a way to streamline that. Um, home based case management services that are connected to a household, especially if someone may be receiving prevention assistance, to make sure that that um, just if they got uh, assistance for a couple of months and then a couple of months later they're at risk again, there's somebody there you know, watching and seeing what kind of supports that family needs. Um, oh yeah, a uh, place to hold developers accountable for set-asides. Um, the Florida Housing, Florida Housing has a set-aside for special needs um, units and um, we heard a little bit that sometimes developers don't always know for that, so there needs to be more accountability there. Then we added advocacy, um, and the big thing about advocacy is that we're not, um, not just giving a list of things to advocate for, but that it's a, it's a coordinated effort clouded by the most a number of agencies going and, and, and advocating for various things. Um, so uh, the list is in your packet. Um, we added quite a bit to it based on um, the uh, comments from Thursday, and we were really excited that people seemed really open and interested in the advocacy. So these are the ones that are new. Um, a strategy that somehow connects foreclosed properties to housing programs uh, for homeless individuals and families. Um, and using information uh, from the systems and um, talking about the success that the systems can do, advocate for dedicated um, revenue or dedicated resources to um, fund practices. Um, and now a couple of 